the other major reason to actually write uh, Stoke was we wanted to simplify and um, accelerate the uh, process of advecting particles using film effects, which is something that Cricutoy users do all the time. And um, Stoke saves the same type of PRTs that Cricutoy would save if you would use particle flow with um, a partic with a film effects follow operator inside and the uh, fluid simulation simulated with uh, film effects. But the saving of the PITs is faster because first we are simulating on multiple threads and we are saving on multiple threads. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. There is a lot to be said about it. And uh, the results that uh, this approach is uh, producing are also more pre predictable. I'm going to uh, switch my scene or go and open um, Hopefully, I can find it quickly here. I have a basic scene which contains a film effects setup. And in this scene, I don't have stock yet, but I have film effects, and film effects was already simulated in a relatively narrow grid, I must say. Uh, when I created that simulation, I didn't create a large enough grid, so the velocities are really touching the sides of the simulation, and uh, this would be a problem for particle flow with film effects unless you delete the particles that are trying to escape the grid. So I have this simulation and all I have to do is say, let's say I select only the fluid simulation, click on the stalk icon and click in the viewport. What I'm getting is film effects as an emitter and film effects as a velocity field. So um, emitting only 100 particles per frame, I could go and hit the simulate button and about uh, two seconds later, I have my particles, which are 10,000 in the last frame, following the general motion of the uh, fluid simulation. And as you can see, in this case, I am uh, displaying them again as velocities. I can change the color to velocity so I can see how fast they're moving and in which direction. But, okay, let's uh, create more particles. And in this case, you see that we are sampling the film effects uh, um, source channel, but we're not getting any of the other channels that would be available in film effects. And if I want to get information about the emitter, for example, I can replace this emitter with the original emitter of the film effects, which was the teapot. I can pick the teapot and I get my channels. I can do exactly the same as before. For example, get texture coordinates and simulate with them, which is very useful if I want to have sticky mapping coordinates. For example, if I display here again the, uh, okay, this is the velocity and this is the uh, texture coordinates. My particles now are showing the UV coordinates of the teapot, and if I would go and say I have a material on this teapot, I'll assign a checker map, for example, to it, and the checker map displayed in the viewport on the teapot shows certain areas that are white and some that are black. If I select stock and assign the same material, now uh, I have to just switch here to color, and you'll notice, especially if I switch to large dots, that the particles are getting the color of the point underneath where they get emitted because those UV coordinates are taken only at the mission time in the beginning and then they follow the particle and never change. So you can stick your mapping coordinates from the emitter and follow. Um, so this is useful, but what if I wanted to emit not from the teapot itself, but still from the film effects and still sample all the channels that exist. And in that case, uh, the Krakatoa uh, PAT um, FFX, the film effects uh, object, which creates particles in the grid, uh, would help you. I can say don't emit in smoke, emit, on, emit only in fire. And uh, um, in the, that case, the important channels that I need um, would be available. I can go to stock and I can disable also the teapot and pick by name this film effects object. And now you see all the channels, color, fire, f uh, fuel, temperature, density, vorticity, and the density gradient which are created by us. Uh, Actually, the vorticity comes from film effects, but the density gradient is calculated by the PRT, film effects object. So I can actually re-simulate, but in this case, use the particles that I'm creating. And of course, I can change this uh, threshold here to create particles only close to the teapot. And I can uh, change the um, size. If I'm simulating, um, that's important to mention. Stoke is using, by default, the render uh, settings. So if I'm using relatively uh, high density uh, distribution, for example, 
um, I have special settings for rendering in PT volume or uh, I'm using frost as a meter and so on, the render state of that object will be taken. But in this case, we'll be emitting just in the uh, fire channel. I'll switch this threshold somewhere around here. I can add a subdivision and actually dis display the subdivisions here. And uh, in Stoke, my particles now will be emitted from the original particles of this stock object. Um, and here is a checkbox that says emit from viewport particles if you want to use exactly what you see in the viewport and not what would be generated at uh, a render time. So if I'm simulating now, uh, my simulation will be actually uh, emitting from each point that were crea was created by the PRT uh, film effects object. Um, we're not getting the texture at this point because it doesn't have any knowledge about the UV coordinates of the uh, teapot that weren't safe with the film effects simulation. But uh, all the other channels, I could go and get. I can check fire, and then I can uh, use a magma, for example, on top of stoke to test that value or see what the temperature is and use it to drive a color, for example. So if I check this and uh, simulate, my particles will actually contain a temperature channel, which will be the temperature at the moment when the particle was actually emitted, not the temperature inside the volume, because after we start moving it, it will be pretty much the, the value that was acquired when the particle was born.